So we're starting chapter four. We skipped chapter four to do chapter five at the begin at the end of the semester, last semester before Christmas break. And so we're coming back to chapter four because chapter four is by far the longest chapter that we're gonna do. So you're gonna need probably two pieces of paper for this. Um, yeah, probably two pieces of paper. Chapter four is all about polynomials. Polynomials. Polynomials is really two words smashed together. Not two words, but it's a prefix and a, and a word. Nomial being a root of the word number, and poly being a prefix that means many. So a polynomial is just many numbers. Don't feel overwhelmed. We've been using polynomials, and so have you've been using polynomials for a long time. Okay, so many numbers. Um, poly being a prefix that means many, nomial meaning number. And you've been using these, these are things like quadratics. That's a polynomial. It's three terms, one, two, and three. Each of these nomials, or monomials, sorry, single number sets, um, being added together to make a trinomial. There are three things here, okay? Those kind of words with nomial, binomial, and all that, we're, you don't really need to use those. I'm just using the academic language. Okay. So some examples of these things are like 5x squared minus 8x to the fifth plus 20x minus 11, maybe. Or, I don't know, 1 half x to the 11th minus 20x plus 15x to the third minus, I don't know, plus 11, instead of minus 11. Or I don't know, uh, is a negative 2x squared minus 5x to the fifth plus 3x to the third minus 52. Okay, those are all polynomials. They're, they each have four terms, just because I did it like that, but you could have many terms, you could have two terms, you could have a single term. They're all polynomials. Things that are not polynomials. Not polynomials. It's got a fractional exponent. If it's got a negative exponent, not a polynomial. If it has x in the exponent, not a polynomial. If it has any of these things, regardless of what the rest of the function looks like, not a polynomial. Okay? And we're going to try to kind of ease our way into this chapter. Chapter 4 is really long. It's by far the longest. It's about polynomials. It's about it's the longest chapter we're going to do. We probably won't finish it till like the first week of March uh, or the very end of February, somewhere in that couple weeks, um, which is like six or seven weeks. It's a long chapter. Okay. After that, we're going to do things like exponential functions, and then we're going to do trig functions like sine, cosine, tangent stuff. And I think that will be our whole year. Um, but we might add some some uh, sequence stuff in. I'm not quite sure if we'll have time for that. If we do sequences, we're going to do last, last. OK, so those are polynomials. 
Um, and the thing we're going to do with these today is we're going to write them in standard form. We're going to write them in standard form and we're going to use standard form to do one thing, um, which will probably continue on Thursday. But standard form for a polynomial is actually what you are very used to, especially when it comes to quadratics. Standard form for a polynomial is just writing it where the exponents are in descending order. Descending means decreasing. So if you descend down some stairs, you walk down the stairs. If you were to ascend, you would go up. Descending means down. So this is decreasing. If you were to descend down a scale, like a bunch of notes, you'd go high, you'd go high to low. You'd go down the scale. No, I'm not going to. I thought seriously about attempting to sing a scale. It's not happening. This is decreasing. On a guitar, play an open note, and then you fret up the string to get higher and higher. That would be descent. No, that'd be ascending. You'd be going up. I'm sorry. Descending would be going down the fret, making everything lower, deeper as you go. Okay. So we're just going to rewrite a polynomial function in standard form. Okay, so for example, don't want to use green, let's use black, I guess. And this is what the, the homework is going to look like. Yes, we're getting homework today. No, it's not very long. Let's do Sunday. Rewrite the function. Actually, I think I already assigned you the homework in Teams. In standard form. Now, why standard form? Why do we want it in this decreasing order? Well, it's easier to read, and it's going to be extremely useful for graphing and things that we are going to do later on. So there are a number of reasons that we would want it in this order. So standard form for negative x cubed plus 13x to the fourth minus 5x minus 17 plus x squared. This is not in standard form. We have our exponents, 3, 4, 1, 0, and 2, just kind of in a random order. They're not in descending order. The biggest exponent is not first. Yeah, Jonathan, I'm recording it. Sorry, it's blurry. Okay. Also, just found out about this feature, which might be helpful for people. Not sure. Okay. So the biggest exponent here is four. That's the first one. And then the three is going to come next. Uh, three, two, one, x to the first will be the fourth thing. And then the, the number is going to be last. You do not need to write these numbers out on the homework. I would not do it this way. I would just rewrite it in standard form. So we get 13x to the fourth first. It's the biggest exponent. Negative x cubed plus x squared minus 5x minus 17. That is in standard form. Same function. If I was to plug both of those into Desmos, it would look exactly the same. But one of them is in standard form and one of them is not. This is distinctly easier to read. It's not the coefficients that are biggest to last, right? The 17 is bigger than the 13, but it's still at the end. It's the exponent that matters. So 4, 3, 2, 1, and then this is really like x to the 0, but we don't write that. Okay, 
So that's one example of standard form. We're going to do another one. It is not always the case that you will have every exponent. So this went 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Sometimes it skips. So this doesn't have all of the exponents, but we're still going to write it largest to smallest. So the biggest exponent is, let's see, we have a 0, we have a 2, we have a 5, we have a 7, and we have a 1. So this is the biggest one. 5 is the next biggest, 2 is the next biggest, x is the next biggest, and then the constant always goes last. So this in standard form would be negative 3x to the 7th plus 14x to the 5th minus 5x squared plus x plus 11. So this is in standard form. Now, to reiterate why, this term right here, this very first term with the biggest exponent and the number in front, controls most of what the graph looks like. These other things move the graph around and change the shape too. But when we go to the extremes of the graph, when we put in really big numbers for x or really negative numbers, really big negative numbers, this is going to control which direction the graph goes. Okay, This first thing. The other numbers do stuff, but for the big idea of what the function looks like, this is the thing that's in control. Okay, So we have some terms to describe this first thing that we're going to talk about. And then we're going to talk about end behavior, which is like, what do these numbers do to the graph? So we'll talk about that in a second. But first, we have some vocabulary. The homework is going to ask you to do two things. Rewrite a function in standard form. So do this. Rewrite it from biggest exponent to smallest exponent. And then talk about these three words. The degree, the name, uh, no, sorry, the type, which I am not concerned about. The other two are more important. And then the leading coefficient. Okay, the degree is just what is the biggest exponent? So the degree of this would be 7, because this 7 is the biggest exponent. It's not the biggest number in the function. We have a 14 here. But the biggest exponent is the 7. 7 is bigger than 5, it's bigger than 2, it's bigger than 1, and it's bigger than 0. So the degree of this thing right here is 7. The type is based off of the degree, and this is just the name. Which is why I'm not super concerned, because some of them don't have names. Like 7? I'm sure this someone gave this a name at some point but we don't use it enough to remember it but so there are some common names like constant function linear you've heard these words before quadratic cubic quartic and so on i'm not concerned that you know the names or the types don't need that you do need to be able to find the degree and the leading coefficient. This is just the number at the front. This is the first number. And it's only the first number if it's in standard form. So we could write these in any order, but when it's in standard form, the leading coefficient is negative 3. So the leading coefficient for this is negative 3, and the degree would be 7. These two numbers are going to tell us a lot of information about what the graph looks like without even having to graph anything, plug it into Desmos, any of that kind of stuff. Okay. So the homework is going to look like this. Put something in standard form, tell me the degree, and tell me the leading coefficient. This is already in standard form. The degree is 3, it's this number, and the leading coefficient 
is negative 7. You have to do that on the homework too. You have to do those, those two things. Rearrange it in standard form, figure out the degree and the leading coefficient. The, um, the degree and the leading coefficient are going to tell us two things. And so we're going to make a chart to keep track of that information. Okay? Because we have a lot of combinations. Uh, there's four. Well, there's not a lot. There's four. Let me check how much time I have left. i got to get used to this. we got 15 minutes. That should be enough. Okay. So I'm going to grab another whole other piece of paper. Uh, you might have room below this, but um, I suggest using a piece of paper because this chart that we're going to make, here's a finished one, Oop. like this, takes up about a whole piece of paper, and you're going to use it a bunch. So you might want to be able to like move it around and keep it not just in the one place in your notebook. Um, this chart's going to get used a bunch. So this is our end behavior chart. End behavior. We have four different pieces uh, or situations. So I'm going to make a four quadrant mark on my paper. Each of these is going to get a graph in it. And we're going to talk about the degree and the leading not on camera, leading coefficient. So this is going to go on each one of the boxes, four boxes. So the degree is the size of the exponent. We're not at this point caring about what the specific degree is. We just want to know, is it odd or even? So this first box is going to be odd degree, positive leading coefficient. So for an example, a graph that looks like that would be f of x is, I don't know, 3x to the third minus 5x plus 15. Who knows? Odd degree, 3, positive leading coefficient. And this graph probably looks something like this give or take a lot because I do not actually know what this looks like it probably looks something like this now why do I know that well I know that because with an odd degree if I put in a big positive number it's going to be big and positive as we go to the right we don't actually care about the middle part right now We'll get to that later on this unit. We just care about the end behavior, which just means the extremes of the graph. If we go really far to the right, what happens? And if we go really far to the left, what happens? Well, as x goes to infinity on the right this way, it's going to go up. So as x approaches, that's what this little arrow means, positive infinity, as it gets really big, as it goes to the right, the function also approaches positive infinity. It goes up. Right? If I put big numbers in here, I'm going to get a big number. Because this number is positive, and we have an odd degree. So we'll go to the right, it goes up. If we go to the left, in other words, if we put negative numbers in for x, well, we're going to get negative numbers out, because it's an odd degree. We're multiplying an odd number of times. So as x goes to negative infinity, as we go to the left, well, the function goes down also to negative infinity. So it goes down into the left. Eventually we'll talk about what happens in the middle here, but we don't care right now. We're just worried about the ends of the graph. Okay, so odd degrees, the ends of the graph go in opposite directions. So this one goes up over here and down over here. 
even degrees are going to go in the same direction. So the goal is going to be, can we just look at a function like this and know what happens at the end of the graph? I don't know what happens in the middle of this function. It probably doesn't even look like, exactly like this. I don't know. I'd have to plug it into Desmos to see. But I do know that at the ends of the graph, it goes up to the right and down to the left. What happens if we keep the degree odd, but we change it to a negative leading coefficient? In other words, what happens if we reflect the graph down? So my example is going to be f of x equals negative x to the fifth. Yeah, I'm just going to leave it like, yeah, let's, let's subtract 2 or something. Negative x to the fifth. So I know something. I know, I know it's going to go like this, and I know it's going to go like this. I don't really know what happens in the middle here, except I do know that x to the fifth goes one, two, that would be third, this would be fourth, and then it goes up again. So it looks like that. Ish. The height of the bumps aren't right. Their position's probably off. But the ends of the graph are correct, because if it's odd and negative, it's going to go down to the right and up to the left. Okay, and that's what this weird notation says. As x approaches positive infinity, as we go to the right, right, as we go this way, the function approaches negative infinity. It goes down. As we go to the left, well, then the function is going up. It's approaching positive infinity. As we put in big negative numbers in here, well, it increases, and that's because it's negative. Leading coefficient. Okay. So the goal here is very quickly look at the function and figure out what do the ends do. We don't care about all the middle squiggles yet. We just care what does the right side do? What does the left side do? Okay. What about even degrees, though? Can you go back a little bit? Yep, sorry. I got too fast. You're good. Cool. So I'm not going to write leading coefficient out. I'm just going to write LC, which uh, you may want to do as well to save some time. So here, for these, the degree is going to be even for both of them. We looked at both of the cases for odd degree, positive or negative leading coefficient. Here, we're going to look at even degree. So like x squared, what happens on a quadratic function when the leading coefficient is positive or negative? So yeah, let's say we had a positive x squared function. Oh, man. Nope, hit that button, sorry. So this would look like this thing. All right, that's just a quadratic function that we've seen before, parabola. And that's x squared. That's an even exponent. Here are the ends of the graph. If you ignore the bottom or what happens with the curve, 
the ends of it both go in the same direction. So what we're saying is, as x goes to the right, well then the function also goes up. So we go to the right, it goes up. And as we go to the left, excuse me, as it goes to the left, it also goes up, right? It goes up in both directions. And that's because we're squaring everything. When we square a negative number, we're going to get a positive number. When we square a positive number, we also get a positive number. So it goes up on both sides. So even degree, it's going to go up on both sides. And if the number out front here is a positive number, well, then it opens up. But if it's negative, it's going to open down, right? It's going to flip over. And so we'll come back to this on, I mean, We'll finish this last quadrant, but we'll come back to this more on uh, Thursday about what we're actually going to do with it. And we're going to use it basically the whole unit. Mostly at the beginning and the end, but okay. And let me know if I need to go back. But this last one, even degree and negative, this would be like f of x negative or x to the fourth plus, I don't know, three or something. This is going to look something like this. So x to the fourth has two little bumps in it, like a camel's back. Because the leading coefficient is negative, I know they both open down. And because it's an even degree, this exponent's even, I know they go in the same direction. So they both go down because it's negative. And so our notation for as x goes to infinity, well, then the function is going to negative, right? As I go to the right, it goes down. And on the other side, as x goes to negative infinity, as I go to the left, as we go this way to negative infinity, uh, then the function also goes to negative infinity. Okay. I'll leave that for a second, but we're going to come back to it. Mostly what you're doing, though, is the first part. Rearrange the function in standard form, and then determine, just tell me what the degree is, and tell me what the leading coefficient is. We're going to use that information later to sketch these graphs really quickly. Okay.